In this video, I'll review the Unwrap UVW modifier inside 3D Studio Max. The Unwrap modifier makes it possible to control the placement of surface information on difficult geometries. In this example, you can see the state lifeguard tower decals have been placed on the parametric primitive teapot found inside 3D Studio Max. With the teapot selected, we can see that there's been a Turbo Smooth and an Unwrap UVW applied. Turbo Smooth is turned off currently, and if we turn it on, we can reveal that smooth meshing will occur. And with the Unwrap selected, we can then select the Edit button found under Parameters to reveal the unfolded geometry that's been created for this particular teapot. All of this unfolding is done in a series of stages by selecting individual elements that comprise the teapot. If unfolded in its entirety, there would be a large mess of polygons to sort out. So it's essential that the teapot is unwrapped or unfolded in a series of stages. Inside the Edit UV dialog, we can also reveal the current map that's been assigned to the teapot. By viewing this, we can then see that the polygons agree with the graphic information that's set up inside Photoshop. To understand how this is accomplished, let's take a look at an example where no decal or UVW map has been applied. I'll pull down in the modifier stack until I find the Unwrap UVW. With the Unwrap UVW applied, you'll notice a series of seams that now span around and across the teapot. This represents how the teapot will be unfolded inside the map. With the map selected in the modifier stack, I then want to go through and carefully unwrap or unfold portions of the teapot bit by bit. It's essential not to do it all at once, otherwise there will be a large mess of polygons. Since I've pre-addressed this, I'm going to open up the unwrap and select by face and I've set that the pot proper has an ID of 1, the top has an ID of 2, the spout and handle have separate IDs, and so forth. Let's begin by selecting the handle and seeing how that might be done. So with the handle selected, I'll click on the Edit button, and then a dialog pops up revealing the polygons that comprise the handle. This now needs to be flattened out so that we can then paint or apply a map to it. I'll go to the mapping pull down and pull down to where it says flatten map. There's some tolerance that could be adjusted here. I'm going to leave the defaults, but you can also experiment with the threshold and the spacing between the polygons once unfolded. You'll see represented here now the sides, tops, and underside of the handle unfolded onto the screen. I want to gain access to these polygons so I can temporarily move them off the screen. I'm going to come back to my main interface here and once again select those polygons. I'll zoom out and use the move tool inside this dialog to reposition the polygons just out of my work area. In the end all of my flattened out polygons must reside within this black box. I've now selected the spout by using Select Material ID 4. And I'm going to, in this case, use one of the predetermined map configurations rather than unfolding this. The spout is generally cylindrical in shape, so I'll use cylindrical. And then when we bring up our dialog, we'll see that the polygons have been organized uh, and flattened out based on the cylindrical map. Now this obviously doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of our use and our need to place uh, graphics and so forth on the surface, but you'll notice there's some additional features inside the map parameters. One of the things that I want to do is get the best alignment between the cylindrical shape and this cylindrical geometry. I'll click on best align and now you can see that the cylindrical map has been organized to align with the teapot spout. And what we see unfolded here makes more sense in terms of our needs and being able to paint surfaces and place decals. I'll use the move tool and also move the spout off the screen and out of the work area. 
You can see now that I've unfolded the handle, the spout, and the teapot top. Both the handle and the top were used by uh, the flattening method, and of course the spout was used uh, the cylindrical and best align. When it comes to the body of the teapot, I'm going to use the pelt method of unfolding the pot. Once again, I'll select material ID. This time it'll be ID number one. Look here in the main portion of the interface, we see something called pelt. Now, if I use all of the polygons at once and use pelt, uh, it'll be a very difficult set of surfaces to manipulate. So it's advantageous to just select half the pot at a time. To be able to do this, I'm going to move into another view and select just those polygons that comprise one half of the teapot. Be certain that ignore back facing is not turned on so we can gain access to all the polygons for this half of the teapot. Also take care to make sure you don't accidentally overlap onto other polygons, albeit they're on different geometries or elements inside the teapot, but they're still inside the teapot polymesh. So I'm going to select all of these polygons and now I've got all of the polygons that make up 50% of the teapot. Next I'll click on the pelt button here in the map parameters and once I do that the dialog now reveals that this half the teapot has been stretched out on this series of tension rods. I can come in here and individually adjust these or we can click on the start pelt button which will stretch the polygons that make up this side of the teapot. We want to proceed by doing the same on the opposite side so that we have a fully stretched out version of the teapot. I'll go ahead and commit to this and now that this is still selected just like before I need to make sure that this set of flattened polygons is temporarily moved out of the way. I'll proceed by doing the same on the opposite side. Now that I've flattened out all of the elements that make up the teapot, I've moved them all carefully back within this black bounding box. You can move them by scaling, repositioning, and the scaling does not have to be uniform. We can also manipulate elements of the geometry, not unlike elements back in the main modeling environment. We can select by point, edge, or face. If I'm on face mode, I can pick up a geometry and we can move or reposition it elsewhere on the screen. You'll notice the polygons around this particular polygon are being repositioned and tugged along with it. It's important to realize that anything we move in here does not affect the geometry back in the main modeling environment. All it does is distort or shape what sort of graphic surface will ultimately be applied to this. Now in addition, the two halves of the teapot, once unwrapped, need to be rejoined and welded together so we have a contiguous surface here on which to map. It is possible to leave the two sides separated. In fact, since my decal is only going to be on one side and the opposite side, we don't necessarily have to stitch this back together. But if you would choose to paint bands around the teapot, or have some sort of stripe pattern or have a contiguous uh, pattern that wraps the teapot, then you're going to have to find some edge on which to weld or join uh, the teapot map together. All of this can be done very much like welding surfaces back in the main interface and for example it's done by simply selecting those vertices that would be welded together and under the tools pulling down to where you find weld. You may also need to reorganize some of the geometries by scaling and moving. In this case, I've selected just the vertices that wrap across the side of the teapot halves. And I might choose to use the vertical scale to force these into alignment. This is what's been done to organize all the upper portion of the teapot surface here. The lower portion that bends beneath has pretty much been left the way the pelt uh, had stretched it out. Once you have the map created, then you go to the Tools pull down and render this out as a template. We'll click on Render UVW Template and the map is rendered out much like we see here and then can be saved for use in Photoshop by clicking on Save Image. In Photoshop, 
that information can be brought in on the layer. You could uh, take a duplicate and invert it so that we just see the brighter version here and we can get rid of the black. Beneath that I have a layer that has the color, the general color of the lifeguard tower. And then the individual decals can be placed on portions of the teapot mesh. Once we have the decals in the location that we want, we no longer need this information. In fact, this would compromise our final outcome. And all we're going to see is a decal sheet that looks like this. Anywhere that this decal lands, in this case on the top of the teapot, it will be rendered and it will be rendered surrounded by the blue field. This is how we get the blue paint color and the decals located strategically. The desired results are then rendered out as a JPEG and brought into 3D Studio as an image map under the diffuse channel. Back inside 3D Studio, in our material editor, I've imported the information on the lifeguard tower here into this diffuse map channel and uh, as before select on the color button you can verify what map we have and there it is uh, for us to see with our decals in the blue field we can go ahead and close this back up that information now can be dragged onto the teapot and we should see instantaneously that all of the graphics have gone to the proper location. Now of course that's because we're also viewing the map inside viewport and the UVW unwrap has been placed and the map has been taken into Photoshop and all of the decals carefully located on their proper polygons.